It's a crisp April morning, shortly before 8.30 a.m., and there's a steel gray ship tied up to the dock in the Baltimore Harbor. Crew members are arriving and walking up the gangplank to join others who have already started the day's work. It's a scenario not uncommon in this busy working harbor. But this is no ordinary freighter. It's the SS John W. Brown, a ship frozen in time. The John W. Brown, or Brown, looks just as she did when she was launched on Labor Day 1942 at the Bethlehem Fairfield Shipyard in Baltimore. From her paint scheme and armaments to her gauges and engine, the Brown is a fully functioning throwback to the height of U.S. Navy technology in 1942. The Brown and her siblings were not even expected to survive the war. The Navy expected 75% losses, and the planned obsolescence of the ships meant they had a shelf life of about five years. So how did the Brown beat the odds, especially after the war? How did a ship expected to be sunk or salvaged in less than a decade come to survive 72 years? An impassioned crew of volunteers is out. Since the ship arrived in Baltimore in less than pristine condition in 1988, an all-volunteer crew has restored her and kept her not only ship-shape, but sea-worthy. While many of the crew who tended to the Brown initially were World War II vets, their numbers have diminished in recent years. In each department's unofficial photo, departed crew members are remembered with a gold star. One Brown crew member who served on a similar Liberty ship during the war is Joe Colgan, a retired executive from the National Brewing Company. When he can, Colgan makes a three-hour drive from Ocean Pines to help keep his ship's guns an accurate reflection of what they were like during his service. I come down here, try to put the guns in the same condition that they were in World War II. The Brown still bristles with the 40s-era cannons and machine guns she used to ward off air, sea, and landborne threats during the war. Colgan said despite their menacing appearance, the guns have been completely rebuilt, but are now just for show. We stripped them all down, took them all apart, took all the spare parts they gave us, rebuilt these guns so they look new, and quite frankly, we fire some of them. Only we do it Hollywood style. The fact that he finds himself volunteering on the same kind of ship he spent most of the war surprises no one more than Colgan himself. When I retired, a neighbor of mine said, hey, they're bringing a Liberty ship into Baltimore, and I said, when I stepped off my last one in 1945, I swore to God I'd never step foot on another Liberty ship. Below decks, it's a rare day aboard the John W. Brown. The engine crew is firing up the 72-year-old boiler to check for problems. And while they've made some accommodations for a crew that is no longer in their teens and early 20s, navigating the engine area still involves plenty of steep stairways and narrow ladders. It takes hours for the boiler to build up a full head of steam, and in the interim, the engine room is a flurry of activity as the crew fixates on checking pistons, steam pressure, and temperature, all using gauges and equipment that would have made a World War II crew feel right at home. Given the level of activity aboard the Brown, it might seem like she was gearing up for something special, but it's just another day aboard the John W. Brown as the crew works together to keep beating the odds of survival.